Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It's the 15th of March. As always, I have the chapters, so you can jump to any particular update you care about the most. New videos this week. So I dived into the Azure Cloud Shell, um, how we can leverage it, what the options are, and some of the more powerful capabilities, especially in things like, hey, we can actually edit files, we can run code, we can upload, download files. So I went through that. I did a really quick video because there's been a redesign to the Microsoft certification portal experience. So when I'm taking the exam, they've added some things and it's really just enhances uh, the exam experience, but I didn't want people to be surprised and get confused and that causes anxiousness. So I quickly went through what to expect. And then I looked at the app gateway, which is traditionally layer seven, but now it supports that layer four for TCP, but probably not gonna use that very much, but more importantly, TLS over TCP. So when I have some layer four workload that is using TLS at the layer four, well, I can now leverage App Gateway for that because App Gateway does that terminating, it can do the TLS offload for me to free up that compute uh, performance on the backend resources. So I went through that capability. On to what's new. So on the compute side, there have been some API Center updates. Remember, API Center is all about providing that central hub where I can do my API registrations, inventory, management, governance, and even then use it to discover what APIs are available. So there's a VS Code extension. So now it's easier than ever to actually register APIs with the API Center. And also now we have linting output. So linting is that automated checking of code syntax, looks for stylistic errors, um, programmatic errors for a specific language. So now we have that for the API Center integration. So it's gonna show it in VS Code, but it's also gonna have that linting and analysis within the Azure API Center itself. Uh, there's a new API analysis report for the API definitions and comparing them against the design guidelines. Azure VM Image Builder is moving to an isolated mode uh, in three days time. So currently when I use Azure VM Builder to create my images, it's using a shared set of infrastructure. So now it's moving to dedicated resources in my subscription. And what that means, the upshot of that is it will be restricted to compute and network resources within that subscription itself. But this gives me some enhanced security. Um, there's nothing I have to do as part of this. However, because it's now running as a, an isolated resource in my subscription, you'll see some temporary additional resources get created in your subscription. An Azure Container instance, a, a VNet, an NSG, a private endpoint. So if you're using Azure policy to limit those types of resources, hey, that, that may stop that happening, so I'll need to go and look at that. And also you need to make sure Microsoft.Container Instance Resource Provider is registered in your subscription. If you're using the feature, you should have received a notice telling you all of this. Um, app, uh, Azure Container Apps now supports Tomcat. So what this means is, uh, with this Apache Tomcat support, instead of now having to take my Java app um, use Docker to put it in a container image to deploy it to Azure Container Apps, which again provides that abstraction from AKS, makes it easier to just deploy my apps. I can now just take a WAR file, that web application archive, and run it directly uh, on my uh, Azure Container Apps. Also, we now have managed Java components. So these are platform features that otherwise I would have to manage myself. So now it has Spring Cloud Eureka, it has Spring Cloud Config Server for my various service registrations, uh, my externalized app settings. It's using now all of my Java apps have a JVM memory defaults that have better performance, better reliability for the environment. So just some nice um, improvements to my Azure Container apps. On the networking side, so if you need to leave Azure, um, obviously I'll have data egress. And normally you pay for data egress, data leaving the Azure data centers. You get a certain amount free, I think it's 100 gigabytes per month, but then you pay for it. So with this, I can go and claim credit for if I am leaving Azure, 
um, I get that free egress. So I don't have to be penalized effectively for transferring my data out of Azure. So there's a few steps you have to go and do to claim that, but hey, you can actually go and uh, claim that credit now if that's the reason for the egress. On the storage side, so the Blob Cold tier, that's remember the cheapest online tier. Archive is cheaper, but Archive is essentially offline. I would have to bring it back. So Cold gives me the cheapest immediate access storage for the capacity, but I would pay more for the transactions. Well, it's now GA in Poland Central, Qatar Central, and Azure China regions. On the database side, so with Vercel, so Vercel is a platform for web development and web deployment. It has an integration with Cosmos DB. And now with that integration, I can go and create the free Cosmos DB account I get per subscription. So that gives me a certain amount of Cosmos DB usage for free. So I can try things out. So that's now integrated with Vercel. Cosmos DB for Postgres SQL, remember this is using the Citus extension. So I get that sharding, uh, multiple servers, higher capacity, higher performance, can now use Entra ID integration. So what that means is for the authentication for that database, I now have a choice. I could only use Entra ID identities, including things like managed identity, which are native to a resource. I could only use the native Postgres or I could use a combination of them. So I now get that flexibility for what I want to use and I can configure that um, independently for each of my clusters. So I, I have that flexibility. For Postgres SQL Flexible, now there are major version upgrade logs. So this just gives me access to the logs um, and what that might be useful for is those PG upgrade logs give me the insight into the upgrade process. So maybe if there was a problem, it will enhance my ability to troubleshoot and find out what is going on. And I can access those through the portal, uh, through the CLI, and it's easy to integrate with those. Cosmos DB for MongoDB vCore now has private link. So remember private link lets me create uh, an IP address in my virtual network that then directly communicates, not using the public endpoint of that service, I could actually essentially block it. It goes directly to that specific instance of that specific type of service. And I can use that private endpoint from connected networks, peered um, on premises via site site VPN, express route private peering. You just need to make sure you've got the, the DNS, uh, the private zone configuration set up correctly. But that's great for enhancing my security, for removing that public uh, endpoint and restricting the traffic. And then Defender for PostgreSQL Flexible has gone GA. So remember Defender is all about detecting those anomalies and um, helping us enhance our protection for different types of workload. So now we have this for PostgreSQL Flexible, which gives me specific detections and protections for PostgreSQL. So exploits against our databases. So it will give me detail about suspicious activity that may be triggered um, some alerts. It will associate the MITRE attack tactic that correlates to it. It will give me actions on how to investigate and mitigate, and then how I can continue investigating, for example, integrate with Sentinel. And then finally, there are SQL zone redundancy improvements in preview. So if I'm creating an Azure SQL database hyperscale, remember we're separating the page servers from the compute, um, getting that very large scale on performance, now with the named replicas, I can use zone redundancy. So they're, rep they're replicated and spread over different availability zones that have that independent power calling networking control plane. And also general purpose Azure SQL managed instance can be upgraded to a zone redundant configuration. Onto miscellaneous. So there are ARM throttling updates in preview. So remember ARM is the control plane of Azure whether I'm using the portal, CLI, PowerShell, REST, doesn't matter. I'm talking to ARM, because ARM is where policies, RBAC, all of those things are enforced. So we always go through ARM. It's free. And so there's a certain amount of throttling. There's a control of what quota I can use against ARM. So what they're doing is they're changing the way they control those interactions. And essentially now you get a bucket. You get a bucket of interactions that's constantly being refilled up to a maximum level. And then as I perform actions of different types against the bucket, it comes out of the bucket. 
And obviously if I'm taking things out of the bucket faster than that constant refill, at a certain point I'll get throttled and I'll have to wait for that bucket to get um, filled up again. If we go and look at it, it does go through, I'm not gonna go through all the detail of this, but it does talk about how it's doing this. And as you can see, there's limits at the subscription and at the tenant. But what it boils down to is it's increased by roughly 30 times for writes, 2.4 times for deletes, and 7.5 times for reads. And here it talks about the bucket size and how quickly it refills per second. So just be aware that that change is happening. Entra Conditional Access is now integrating with Purview Adaptive Protection Insider Risk. So Microsoft Purview is this fantastic data governance solution, and one of its capabilities is to detect insider risk. So behaviors, signals that might say, hey, this person, their behavior based on machine learning, uh, we think they're doing something. There's some risk that they may be trying to exfiltrate data, they're doing something bad. And so what Purview will do is based on that insider risk detection, it can apply uh, data loss prevention policies to prohibit that user doing other stuff. Well, what I can now do as well is with those signals, it integrates with conditional access. So now under my conditions, I'll see insider risk. And then I could now apply anything conditional access can do. So I could start to block them from other things, other services, apply other types of protections from them. So it just lets me enhance what Purview is natively doing related to data with its data loss prevention policies that it's applying based on that signal and enhance it to now do anything that I'm protecting with conditional access, which can be anything that we're integrating with Entro ID. Uh, DALI 3 image generation model has gone GA. So, hey, that great, give me a prompt to create me a picture of a super villain English guy uh, being chased by a hamburger. Uh, that's now a GA service uh, that I can use through REST and through Python in my Azure OpenAI environments. A managed Prometheus. Remember, Azure Managed Service for Prometheus is a component of Azure Monitor Metrics. It's a special type of workplace which today is only for storing metrics related to Prometheus. And what scraping means is scraping is the mechanism that that uses to go and talk. It does a get against a HTTP endpoint of the service. It gets a response and it parses that response to get the values and stores them. That's the scraping. So now with the TLS and mutual TLS, that endpoint can be HTTPS and it's still going to work with that Azure Monitor Managed uh, Service for Prometheus. So that gives me obviously uh, higher security. And then stateful log search billing is starting uh, beginning of May. So log search is, hey, I'm running uh, a Custo query against my log analytics workspace. And stateful means I understand um, if there's a change in the responses. So stateless, every time I run that log response, it will re-trigger. And also, if that state changes, it doesn't automatically resolve that alert. If I do stateful, it won't keep refiring and it will automatically resolve itself uh, if the state changes and it's no longer a problem. Um, so now when I'm using that, uh, I will get billed for it from beginning of May. And that was it. Uh, as always, I hope that was useful. Until next video, take care.